that may lead to formation of a double helix structure which looks like a twisted ladder with the nitrogenous bases that is the four that i had mentioned appearing to be like the steps of a ladder so let's look at this to understand more of it when you hear the word dna this is what comes into your mind the nucleus of a cell or maybe this one here may come into your mind this is a dna molecule when you look at it keenly you realize that it appears like an entangled matrix that is a dna molecule there are several other substances that it comprises of that we are going to look at today but before that let's start by defining the term dna molecule dna is a double helix chemical substance made up of nucleotides which carry hereditary materials from parents to their offsprings the three major components of a dna molecule include the phosphate molecule a pentose sugar which is also called ribose sugar i think you can see this one here the pentose sugar is named so because it comprises of five carbon atoms when you look at this structure over here it comprises of five vertices that implies that there are some carbon atoms which it contains here even though they have not been indicated because at this moment it's not necessary because we are not concerned with what the pentose sugar comprises of the reason as to why it is referred to as deoxyribose sugar is due to the fact that it does not have oxygen atom in its chemical structure and therefore it is also referred to as deoxyribose sugar on the other hand the ribonucleic acid that is the rna comprises of a ribose sugar hence the term ribonucleic acid and uh, that is uh, just one of the differences between the dna and rna the dna do not comprise of oxygen atom in its chemical structure while rna comprise of oxygen atom in its chemical structure so in short we can also say that dna comprise of a certain type of ribose sugar which do not have oxygen in it while rna comprise of the ribose sugar which contains oxygen as one of its atoms we also have the third component of the dna molecule as a nitrogenous base we have already been mentioning these four types of bases i think we can be able to see it here when you look at these three they have been linked together that is the phosphate molecule pentose sugar and the nitrogenous base they have been linked together therefore if you look at this structure you realize that there is a repetition of this chemical structure this is the first one this one is the second one the third one and the fourth one in that order those single pieces are referred to as nucleotides therefore a single unit of nucleotide comprised of the three major components that we have just mentioned that is pentose sugar phosphate molecule and the nitrogenous base and therefore we can say that a nucleotide is a short segment of dna which comprises of phosphate molecule pentose sugar and a nitrogenous base so it's just but a short segment of a dna molecule this is a nucleotide this is another this is another nucleotide therefore when the nucleotides have been linked together they form the dna molecule and it's therefore right for someone to say that the nucleotides refers to building units or building blocks of a dna molecule when they have been linked together then it leads to formation of subunits which are arranged in a way that it gives the dna strand its chemical polarity when i'm talking about chemical polarity i'm referring to the fact that these 
bases which are linked to one another that is the cytosine to guanine and adenine to thymine they have been linked to one another and uh, this is due to the chemical polarity which is represented by these figures out here when you look at the cytosine it have a chemical structure which is complementary to that one of the guanine so this part will definitely fit into this region they are chemically compatible the word that we use here is they are complementary to one another that chemical polarity that is exhibited by the dna molecule can be well explained when you look at these chemical structures of the nitrogenous bases whereby look at this structure of cytosine it cannot pair up with thymine at all because they are not complementary to one another and adenine also cannot fit into guanine but adenine fits into thymine while cytosine fit into guanine and therefore the nucleotides are continuously linked to one another hence forming a dna strand this enables the formation of this part that you can see here the part that comprise of phosphate and sugar this part leads to formation of what we call sugar phosphate backbone that comprise of phosphate and the pentose sugar in some cases it may also be referred to as sugar phosphate frame in that case it is just a name which has been derived from the combination that makes it up and when they have been made in such a way then we can be having something that looks like this hope you can be able to see this this is the sugar phosphate strand which is painted in a different color from this one here and when you look at the dna molecule like this one that i had shown earlier you realize that it looks like a ladder on one side in this case it has not yet gone through the process called the twining or intertwining it has not been coiled and it has not yet turned into an entangled matrix when it turns into an entangled matrix this is how it's going to look like this chemical polarity that is exhibited by the dna strands can easily be explained using the key and lock model whereby we are having uh, some shapes here which indicate that only a specific type of um, base can fit into a specific one like cytosine here fits only into guanine and adenine into thymine in order for these bases to be linked to one another there is a certain bond which is called hydrogen bond hydrogen bond is located in between the bases which keeps on pulling them together and due to that continuous pull that is generated by the hydrogen bond it ends up coiling because of that force that has been put into place by the hydrogen bond this makes the dna molecule to appear like a twisted ladder and therefore this twisted ladder over here is referred to as a double helix structure from here the specific sequences of bases may code for particular proteins and that one i will explain it further when i'm talking about the dna replication process and always remember that during replication hydrogen bonds must be weakened and broken to make the dna molecule appear as two separate strands once they have appeared as two separate strands then that is when the process of dna replication can start dna molecules vary in length we may have some which have as many as hundreds of thousands to millions of base pairs its length vary based on the number of base pairs that it contain and that marks the end of lesson number 96 thanks for watching goodbye